Hello and welcome to an episode of Historically Marked. I am Jason in St. Louis, just right across from Forest Park, and I am literally standing in a place where a lot of great events and a lot of historical um, performances have happened. I am standing on the former site of St. Louis Arena. Now, many other generations, like if you're if you're over the age of 45 or 50, you probably remember this as a checkered gnome, and some people still refer to it as the old barn. But yes, a big building once stood right here until 1999 when it was demolished. It was brought up in 1929 and for 70 years it was one of the great places to go in St. Louis. So I'm going to show you around the site of what it is now and I'll tell you some history. So here we go. So there are some plenty of lofts or apartment buildings and then over there is the mid-america transplant center i'm going to take you where that memorial is just right up ahead but yes it is said that this grassy area is where the arena or the old barn or checker dome whatever you want to call it once stood and i do not remember where the parking lot was i'm pretty sure maybe it was wrapped around the building i don't know that for sure but again a lot of st louisans have a lot of great memories mostly those i hate to say it you know over the age of probably 45 at least or 50 because they're the generation that saw the greatest concerts and a lot of big name bands during their prime like i don't know there's too many to mention there's rush kiss um <laughs> zz top uh, many more i mean sticks even frank sinatra was here I mean, not just rock bands, but there were plenty others. In fact, the last um, act to play at the St. Louis Arena was in late April 1994. The contemporary Christian artist, the late Carmen, performed here. And then after that performance, it was not used again until it was demolished. And of course, a lot of people remember when it was demolished that day. Because I think they put it on TV but some people were actually able to buy bricks as a as a memory and maybe I think some seats as well like they did for the old Bush Stadium so this here is the donor I'm sorry donor memorial monument it is 12 feet high and it was done by st. Louis artist and sculptor Dan Wiegand it was dedicated in 2009 as it says And this is to honor those who were organ and tissue donors for the gift of life today that they gave others. Now it is said that the center ice was literally right here and that was intentional that they put it in the spot. So if anybody wants to correct me, they are more than welcome to in the comments. And again, the Mid-America Transplant Center is just right over there. It's part of the Barnes Jewish Network healthcare system. But on a nice day like this, in early September, September 12th that is, the fountains are running. Enjoy it while you can. So it's kind of like a splash pad, but not really. 
So a number of sports teams have played here from its existence from 1929 to 1999. Now, most notably to most people, yes, the St. Louis Blues did um, play here from 1967. Of course, the time um, they were introduced in the NHL expansion. But from also from 1994, you know, that was when they decided to move to the Kiel Center, which is now the Enterprise Center. I know the name changes. They kind of drive everyone crazy after every now and then. But it wasn't just hockey. I mean, you also had the St. Louis Eagles, which was uh, an NHL team. Now, the Chicago Blackhawks, who, by the way, if it wasn't for them, the St. Louis Blues probably would not exist here. That's a long story for another time, probably. But they did occasionally use this um, area from 1953 to 1959. Now, basketball, back when, yes, a lot of people don't realize this, but St. Louis, Missouri did once have an NBA team, and they were the St. Louis Hawks. They are now in the hands of Atlanta. But also other sports leagues like St. Louis Stars, the Spirits of St. Louis, the St. Louis Storm, the St. Louis Ambush, many others. So the origins of dating back to what was to come here in 1929 dates back to a year before that when the National Dairy Show offered the city the opportunity to become the permanent location for its annual two-week meeting of dairymen and their prize animals. Yes, this was originally intended for livestock shows. But as we all know, it would expand to other things, including sports events, concerts, as well as other um, sporting events such as probably tra tractor, um, uh, what do you call those, not tractor poles, but you know, the monster trucks, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and probably wrestling and many others too, and also political conventions too, among other uses. So, I mean, yeah, if you were alive, like, during the endurance prime, now this was not to say that the building had its struggles during its, its existence. Like, during the 1940s, by the end of World War II, the um, building was not well kept, as well as when the St. Louis Blues first played here in the late 1960s, but, the building did survive many times. In 1977, Ralston Purina, which, um, as we know, was once based in St. Louis. I mean, Purina um, is still based here, but at the time, of course, Ralston Purina was a thing. But they purchased the name, and um, to many uh, Gen Xers or maybe Baby Boomers, it was known as the Checker Dome. And a lot of um, artists still known as the Checker Dome, such as Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> and probably Billy Joel as well. But it remained that way until 1983. And then the issue came about when they, the city realized there was no way of saving this building. I mean, I can go into many details about that. Now, Bob Cassily, who most of us know as the guy behind the city museum, Turtle Park, among many other things, and who was tragically killed many years ago, he actually wanted to buy the site in cash and turn it into something but it all fell on deaf ears so um <laughs> I'm, of course i'm not really going to get into that but um 1999 it was a sad moment for those who had made memories here at the spot but the good news is it is being put to good use i mean since that time in the last 20 plus years i mean look at all these nice buildings i mean people can live here people can shop here people can eat out here and there's also many other corporations such as iHeartMedia and Centene that um, lease out here. So it's pretty cool. And plus, of course, I can't leave out the sculpture, like I said. <laughs> and I know you're probably tired of hearing me talk about the concerts part already. But, I mean, I think it's very cool that a lot of um, bands during their time, I mean, during their prime, I guess, and back when during their peak in their careers and all that, they performed here and there's a long list but many notables such as the grateful dead they were here on may 15th 1977 led zeppelin was here a month before that on april 15th they were, it was part of their final north american tour which i'm sure they did not realize at the time the police synchronicity tour performed here joan jett and the black hearts was their opening act that was in 1983 the Bee Gees made their only performance here in St. Louis in 1979 as part of their Spirits Having Flown tour. Fleetwood Mac performed two sold-out shows as part of their Tusk tour on November 5th and 6th, 1979. Van Halen has quite a history here as well. 
They performed here many times during the Roth and the Sammy Hagar years. One of my good friends was telling me, he recalls that he was not able to get a ticket to their 1984 tour as um, they did two shows here in that year and they both sold out within two hours. Yeah. <laughs> And then Sammy Hagar, before he even joined the band, he did a huge show here. And it's actually available here on YouTube. I'll put the link in the comments because, I mean, if you ever go to a Sammy Hagar show in St. Louis, it's definitely quite an experience. <laughs> Van Halen also played here on the OU812 tour in 1988. ZZ Top played here many times. And they were actually one of the last to play here in 1994. Bruce Springsteen, Metallica, Neil Diamond, Pink Floyd... Well, the post um, Roger Waters years and uh, many others have played here. So do you have any memories of your favorite shows here at the arena? I would love to hear them because I enjoy hearing people's concert moments. I don't care if you didn't go backstage. I just want to know how it was. I hear the story about Ted Nugent and Sammy Hagar, the moment in 1978 when a massive ice storm suddenly um, hit St. Louis and everybody tried to get out of the parking lot at once and it failed. <laughs> <laughs> now one of my bosses um, went to a rush show um, right around the time the cardinals were in the 1982 world series and getty lee who most of us know as a fan of baseball lee is a lead singer but he did a thing where he says well i see pretty good things for your team tonight <laughs> and he put on a cardinals hat that story was coming from my manager so if anybody has any variations of the story let me know all right, thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Historically Marked, a St. Louis sports edition and entertainment edition, I guess, if you want to call it that. So unfortunately for me, I have very little memories here at this place. Um, a little about me, back in 1986, my family took me here to see Sesame Street on ice, or I'm sorry, Sesame Street live, my bad. And I have little to no memories about that. Also, 1993 years later, my church took, took me to see the Barnum and Bailey Circus. Maybe it was a shrine circus, I don't remember, but it was definitely a circus, and I didn't know at the time that was gonna be my last time in that place. So I have very little memories of what the building was to be like, although I do remember pre-9-11, we could take our own food, like we took a picnic basket of, of what we were gonna eat in there. So I know times have definitely changed since then, but I want, again, I wanna hear your memories in the comments of this place, like what were your favorite sports, entertainment, or any kind of moments that happened here at the St. Louis Arena Spot. All right, I'm Jason in St. Louis, sign off.